Good afternoon, Marines. My name is Staff Sergeant Bennett. I'm a small arms repair technician. I am an instructor here at the Small Arms Repair Schoolhouse. And today we're going to be talking about the M1014 Joint Service Combat Shotgun. The very first thing that we're going to talk about is loading, unloading, and clearing. Now, for the purpose of this, I do have a dummy round, but it is a dummy round. There is no live ammunition at the schoolhouse, so you do not have to worry about that. We talk about loading. The very first thing that you want to do is you're going to want to go ahead and ensure that your, sh your shell carrier has free movement. You're going to grab your shell. You're going to ensure that the front of the shell goes in to the shell ramp. You're going to push in from the back until it clicks. You are now fully loaded. To unload, I'm going to show you how it cycles through. You have your shell release lever, which is this red dot down here by the trigger. You also have your bolt release right here up underneath the bolt handle. What you're going to do is you're going to push down on that shell release lever and it's going to release that shell onto the shell ramp. From here, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pull back on the bolt handle. I'm going to press the bolt release and it's going to cycle around into that chamber. To unload, I'm simply going to go ahead and pull back on the bolt handle and it will eject that shell. You are now unloaded. For clearing, all I'm simply going to do is I'm going to press in on that uh, shell release lever, pull back on the bolt handle until the bolt locks to the rear. I'm going to ensure my weapon is on safe. Visually inspect the chamber to ensure it's clear. I'm going to give a loud motivating clear. Send the bolt home. Your weapon is now clear. Up next, we're going to talk about field strip. Now, for field stripping purposes, what you're going to want to do is that everything from the barrel is held on by this shell cap right here. What you're going to do is you're going to grab it and you're going to rotate it counterclockwise. I'm going to remove it, and then from here, I'm going to get a nice firm grip on the barrel as well as the fore ends. I'm going to just slide it off. Set down my receiver, and then I can separate these. Up next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my bolt handle. My bolt handle is located on the right-hand side of the shotgun. All I'm going to do is I'm going to grab hold of it, twist it slightly, and pull outward. It will remove. Up next, I'm going to remove the tension on my magazine spring by removing the spring seal ring that's at the very end. For this, I don't need any other tools but my bolt handle. All I'm going to do is I'm going to catch that edge on the edge of the, uh, the spring seal. Uh, I'm going to pull it out slightly. Ease off tension off that magazine spring. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove the follower. Up next, I'm just going to remove my bolt by grabbing on the bolt, uh, the bolt breech, slide it right out, set it down. Up next, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, uh, we're going to take apart the bolt. I mean, with, two fo uh, with my index finger and my middle finger and my thumb, I'm going to go ahead and compress the spring, compress the bolt breech down so that the, everything is compressed. From the right-hand side, I'm going to go ahead and remove my firing pin, uh, retaining pin. Ease off tension on that firing pin, and I can take it out, and I can also remove my firing, I can remove my firing pin and my firing pin spring. From here, I'm just simply going to uh, tilt the bolt out, tilt the bolt over, and remove my bolt breech, or my bolt cam, excuse me. From there, I simply remove the bolt breech, and the bolt is taken apart. Finally, we're going to pick up our receiver again, and I'm going to go ahead and fully extend this buttstock so you can see. In order to take the buttstock off of the receiver, there is a line right here on the buffer tube. I'm going to go ahead and compress this uh, the buttstock disassembly button, and I'm going to go ahead and rotate my buttstock to the right and line up the tube with that line, and then rotate it all the way to the left, and then simply slide off. From here, the entire trigger assembly that's being held in place is held in place by this one pin. 
it's headed so it only goes out one way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push in on that with my thumb or I can go ahead and use my bolt handle, push in on it a little bit and remove it. It's not going to come all the way out as there's a little C-clamp uh, that's right in there that holds it in place. So I'm, once I've removed this pin, I can simply lift up on the trigger and the trigger suddenly comes out. I'm going to go ahead and push that retaining pin back in so it doesn't break. Lastly, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give it that nice knife hand, chop between the buttstock and the pistol grip, and rotate the pistol grip counterclockwise. It's going to unscrew it from the receiver. The very last thing that we're going to do for field strip is we're going to remove our gas plugs as well as our pistons. For this, I'm going to go back for my bolt handle, run it through the pistons, break the tension, And once the tension's broken, I can go ahead and just unscrew it with my hands. Now there's already some things that you can start looking at as you're taking this apart when it comes to PMCS. One of those things is as you take the gas plugs off, you want to check those, spring, uh, those seals. There's two seal rings, one on each gas plug. You want to check those seals to ensure that there's no cracks. What I mean by that is right here, there is a little seal. You want to ensure that there's no cracks, that it's nice, it's, everything's put together, it looks like a brand new seal. If there's any cracks, you're going to have to go ahead and replace that. Once you've removed the gas plugs, the pistons will slide right out. For my pistons, what I'm going to go ahead and look at is I'm going to look at them and I'm going to ensure that there's nothing that's cracked or broken or bent that they're nice and straight, everything looks decent, which these are. To inspect the other parts, what I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look at for as the basic stuff, right? So I'm going to look at my springs. I'm going to ensure that my springs aren't cracked or broken, that none of the coils are bent. It doesn't look like it's been cut, so it's good. On the seal ring for my magazine, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ensure that there's no cracks in this. Now, they end up cracking right here, right at these little edges right here. The reason why is because when you compress it so much, this metal's very thin and it will crack. So you want to ensure that there's no cracks between there. This one doesn't, so it's good. I want to ensure that my magazine is at the proper length and that it's not bent or broken or it's not, it's not hyperextended and it's not super compressed. If it's hyperextended, you're going to end up having, uh, not being able to load your shotgun with as many rounds as you need to. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my barrel and I can just start looking at it. Ensure that operator level PMCS is being conducted, which it has been. Same with my receiver, make sure it's nice and clean. And you can tell all of this just for your basic field strip, which this is your basic field strip. And that was disassembled. Now that we've taken it apart, we can go ahead and put it back together. We're going to start with the basics. We're going to grab our bolt our bolt carrier and our bolt breech. Now, my bolt breech has a flat side and it has a rounded side. That rounded side needs to be face up. I'm going to go ahead and then grab my bolt cam. Now, our bolt cam has a little index at the very top. That index is just a little line that needs to face towards the front of the bolt. So I'm going to go ahead and line that up, drop it into place like so. I can now grab my firing pin, run it through my firing pin spring, and push it through the back. Just like how we took it apart, I'm going to go ahead and compress it, and I'm going to grab my firing pin retaining pin and feed it through the right-hand side. Now the firing pin retaining pin needs to go towards the rear. There's that, it's that specific hole right here. Do not attempt to put it through the bolt handle hole that's on the right-hand side. You will get this pin stuck. Do not do that. It goes right here. Our bolts together. Now the interesting thing to remember about this bolt is that this link on the back, this is what lines up with the buffer tube right here on the receiver. The only time you remove this link from the bolt is if this link is damaged or broken. 
And the only way to do that is to punch out this pin that's located right here. That pin is a mandatory replacement pin. If you do knock it out and you have to replace it, you're going to have to go ahead and stake it again. But we generally don't do that unless this is damaged or broken and has to be replaced. Once you've put the bolt back together, we can go ahead and start putting together some of the other smaller stuff. For example, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put together our gas pistons and our gas plugs. They're going to go in from the top down so that the smooth side goes in first. From there, we're going to grab our gas plugs and we're just going to go ahead and we're going to hand tight. We're going to screw them on. We're going to put them hand tight. Now, the gas plugs and the gas pistons are interchangeable, which means that it does not matter which side they go on. So if you don't, if you take them apart and you don't remember which one goes on which one, it's okay. Once you got them on hand tight, we're going to go ahead and grab our bolt handle and we're going to go ahead and tighten it. Um, next, we're going to put our magazine back together. It's going to entail grabbing the receiver and with that magazine tube, you're going to grab the magazine follower, the red side is going to go in first, face down, and you're going to follow it up with the magazine spring. You're going to grab your spring seal and you're going to push it down into the magazine tube. Now you have the capability to push this, mag this spring seal all the way down to the magazine tube as far as it'll go but you don't want to do that because you're going to hypercompress that magazine spring. That's going to prevent you from, it's going to end up damaging that spring and it's going to prevent you from loading uh, the required number of shells that you need. So what we do is we're going to push that spring seal ring all the way down and flush it, make it go flush with the edge of the magazine tube. Once you have that done, you can go ahead and start putting on some of the major assemblies. For example, the very first thing is going to be the pistol grip. Put it on like so. You're going to twist it. Now, on the pistol grip and on the receiver, there's this nice, perfect edge. You want to make sure that these two edges are perfectly lined up because if they're not lined up, you're not going to be able to put your trigger assembly in. It's not going to line up. So I'm going to go ahead and make, be very careful to ensure that they're lined up nice and perfect. I can now go ahead and grab my bolt handle, push out that pin that little retaining pin. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rock my trigger assembly in from the back. Let it click, line up the hole, push the retaining pin through, and it's back together. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my buttstock. The top of the buttstock is going to line up with this flat portion of the buffer tube. I'm going to go ahead and push in on this buttstock disassembly button, push it all the way up, over, up, and over until that buttstock is all the way on. This next part is a little tricky. So there's two ways that this can happen. The bolt has to be put in through the front and this link has to line up perfectly with that buffer tube. The only way that's going to work is if your shotgun is leveled perfectly to the desk or your workbench. You'll be able to tell that it's in and lined up because when I push back on the bolt, there's spring tension, just like that. If for some reason you do not put it back together correctly or you have it standing straight up and you drop that bolt in, you'll go to push back to check for tension and it's not going to move. That's why you want to make sure that it's perfectly level. Once you have that spring tension, grab your bolt handle plug it right back in until it snaps. Once you have the bolt and it's spring tension, you're going to go ahead and upend your shotgun. I'm going to grab my barrel and I'm going to feed the magazine tube through the barrel just like so. Make sure that the top of the barrel lines up with the top of the bolt as well. 
Once you have it there, upend it again. You're going to put on your right hand pistol grip and your left hand pistol grip. Once it's in, you're going to push it all the way back as far as it'll go so there's no silver exposed. And you're going to hold it there because you're going to grab your magazine cap and you're going to tighten it on righty tighty because your magazine cap is what's going to hold the whole thing together. And your shotgun is reassembled. Up next, we're going to move into detailed disassembly of the buttstock assembly. Now, the first thing that we're going to do with this is we're going to remove our cheek rest. Simple Phillips head screwdriver bit. I'm going to go ahead and go counterclockwise and take these screws out. It's just three Phillips head screws. Once you remove those screws, you can just take the cheek rest right off and set it to the side. Up next, we're going to go ahead and remove this rubber butt from the buttstock. For that, you're going to need your small screwdriver. Find where the screws are and simply, once again, lefty loosey, righty tighty, unscrew it. Now with these screws, they're going to stay in the plastic, so you don't need to remove the screws. and then set the buttstock butt off to the side. The very last piece we're going to remove is this buttstock disassembly button. For this, I'm going to need a roll pin punch, my hammer, and I'm simply going to go ahead and place it on the roll pin that's right here on the top. I'm going to uh, hammer it out. Retain the pin, remove the punch, now your button and spring will come right out. And that is complete disassembly of the buttstock assembly. Up next we're going to move on to the inspection process. The inspection portion of this is you're going to take a look at the buttstock, the actual assembly itself, make sure there's no bends or breaks, make sure that the assembly is still in one piece. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at my pin. This pin is a mandatory replacement part. You need to reorder this every time you, put, uh, you take off this button. You're going to go ahead and take a look at the disassembly button spring. You're going to ensure that there is no bends or breaks, that it's not hyperextended or hypercompressed. You also want to ensure that there's a little bit of grease still left on this spring, as well as the inside portion of the button. For the button itself, you're going to go ahead and take a look and make sure that there is no breaks or cracks, which there are none on here. We're going to move on to the buttstock butt, and you're going to ensure that this rubber piece right here has no major cracks in it. This, this one would be called for a replacement. I would replace this, uh, but ensure that these, uh, these screws are still there. You're going to want to make sure that you inspect these screws. These screws you're going to look at, make sure that they're not uh, stripped, make sure that they're not cross-threaded, make sure none of the threads are damaged on any of the screws, which they're not. Then you're going to want to take a look at the cheek rest itself, make sure that there's no major cracks or anything like that in the, uh, in the assembly itself. That's it for the inspection portion. Now we can go ahead and start reassembling. For reassembly, I'm going to ensure that this spring sits inside the button. I'm going to go ahead and place it back in the assembly. When you go ahead and put this pin back in from the top, you're going to want to ensure that this button is compressed while you hammer in this pin. If it's not, you're not going to be able to put it in correctly. Once you get it to where it needs to be, you can go ahead and grab a punch and fully seat that pin all the way down. Until it's flush. Up next, we're going to go ahead and reattach the rubber butt onto the back of the buttstock. I'm going to grab my, my little screwdriver again and proceed to screw it back in. Once that's in, all we have left to do is put the cheek rest back on. You want to line up this cutout with the button 
and the holes for the screws will line themselves up. What I do is I go ahead and I start to pre-thread them. As this will make it easier when I go ahead and fully screw them in. And my buttstock is reassembled. Up next, we're going to disassemble our pistol grip assembly. For this, I'm going to go ahead and grab my punch block. And we're, all we're going to do is we're going to hammer out this little pin that's right here. So you're going to line it up. I'm going to grab the little pin punch and my hammer. Just knock out the pin. Once I remove this, uh, the punch, retain the pin, I can go ahead and knock out these parts that are sitting right in nice and neat in here. Our flex nut will be here, along with our retaining nut and the hex nut. Last but not least, we're going to take off this rubber grip. It's important to remember that this rubber grip is tight with the pistol grip assembly. So we've removed the, the rubber grip from the pistol grip assembly. It's going to be tough because per the TM, this rubber grip is supposed to be glued to this post right here on the pistol grip itself. Uh, this is complete disassembly of the pistol grip. So that's partial part of the, uh, a good caveat into the inspection portion. For the inspection process, again, make sure that this grip is glued onto this uh, post from the pistol grip. You're gonna take a look at your hex nut. You're gonna ensure that your hex nut does not have any chips or burrs, that it's not cross-threaded, everything looks good. You're also going to look at your flex nut, ensure that that bow that you're looking for, that bow is still there. You're going to take a look at the retaining nut because you're going to take a look at it and ensure that the, the staircase is still there, everything's golden, and as well as your, uh, your re retaining pin. That retaining pin still needs to be there. So. Now that that's the inspection portion's done, we can go ahead and move on to reassembly. We're going to go ahead and put back together this, uh, the pistol grip. We're going to go ahead and put our, our hex nut in. It only seats one way. It'll seat nice and neat, just like that. Next, we're going to go ahead and put in our flex nut to where the square piece, you want it to be concave facing out so that the flex part will sit just like that. Up next, we're going to do our staircase. We're going to put on our staircase, and it's going to keep all of those parts nice and neat and ready where they need to be. It'll slide right into place. Once that's in, we can go ahead and we can reinstall this pin. You want to line it up. Make it nice and flush. And that is complete reassembly of the pistol grip. Up next, we're going to go into detailed disassembly of the receiver. Now, the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove our rear sight as well as this Picatinny rail. Our Picatinny rail has five, set, uh, five screws on the very top. And for our rear sight, it has two screws on the bottom, uh, on the underside, well, rather, inside of the receiver. It's important to understand that these two screws on the inside of the receiver are both mandatory replacement parts. If you take these out, you have to replace them. To start off, we're going to go ahead and get a flat tip screwdriver, and we're simply just going to back those screws out. Now underneath these screws, there's going to be these tiny little washers right here. They are concave washers, which means that they only go, they bow. You want the bow, that convex side, to be on the side of the receiver. It's going to follow the groove. You can go ahead and lift up your receiver now, and your rear sight will come right off. Up next, we're going to go ahead and remove our Picatinny rail. Again, with a flat tip screwdriver. I'm 
Once you kind of break that tension, now you can just hand screw it. Now be advised that each one of these small screws also has those convex and concave washers. They all follow the contour of the rail system and of the receiver. Once that's done, I simply pull off the Picatinny rail and that's removed. Up next, we're going to take a look at removing our uh, buffer, our buffer spring, as well as the buffer spring cap. The buffer spring cap is held in place by this little, uh, this little C spring right here. So you're going to want to take your retaining ring pliers, pinch together, and remove that little C ring washer right there. Once you remove that safety lock right here, we have our end cap for our buffer tube. That buffer tube end cap is under a lot of spring tension. It has two no little notches on it that are perfect fit for a screwdriver. However, your big screwdriver that you'll have in your Echo 7900s is just a little bit too big for this. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna walk it. Very carefully walk it. You'll have room. So what I like to do at this point, once I've walked it enough to where that little lip is covering it, I'll take a punch and I'll place it in between the two and I'll place my finger at the top and I'll use that and do just half turns until it comes off. You'll know when it's coming off because it'll fly, uh, it's under a lot of spring tension. So you want to make sure that you have very good stability with that. Positive control. Once you've backed this out enough and you're maintaining positive control, you can kind of use your thumb and maintain positive control while you continue to spin that end cap off. Be careful because it will shoot. When I say you have a lot of spring tension, this entire spring sits in this tube. So you have to be very careful when you take it off. There's our end cap, and if we tilt it out, there's our buffer. The next step that we're going to do is we're going to remove this retaining pin right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to punch it out. So we're going to grab our bolt handle, push it out, and open it up. Up next, you're going to need your retaining ring pliers to do the same trick that you did before. Pinch it together, ease it up, take off tension of that retaining ring. That little lock will come loose. That will give you free reign to kind of pull it out. What holds this pin on right here are these parts just like here. You'll underneath, right up here in the receiver, you'll have this little, uh, this little spring right here. That is what sits in the groove of the pin. On top of that, you'll have this buffer, and then you'll have the locking ring. The very last thing that we have to do with this is we have to take, we can go ahead and we can remove our bolt release button. That's going to come from this pin right here that you're going to have to punch out. Then I can remove the punch. Bolt release button comes out. Same with the bolt release button spring. I can go ahead and see that my retaining pin for it is right here, still in the receiver. So I can go ahead, line this back up, punch it out. If you, you're going to probably have to get a little bit longer of a punch, which is okay. And the pin will fall out. This is complete disassembly of the receiver assembly. So when we move on to inspecting, we're going to go ahead and we're going to just work our way towards me. So first up is our Picatinny rail. When you look at our Picatinny rail, you want to ensure that there's really no shiny spots. Um, there can be some, but if they're not doing their job of retaining any type of gear that's being placed on top of it, you're going to want to go ahead and replace that. I'm going to go ahead and look at all my washers right here. I'm going to ensure that they're not cracked or broken, which none of these are. You can kind of tell when they are because they'll have little micro fractures on the sides. These don't often break because these don't often come off. Uh, so you, that's really one of the things that you should look at though. 
Once again, we're going to look at our mandatory replacement parts for these screws and go ahead and put those to the side and bring in our new ones. We can go ahead and look at our sight, ensure that our sight's still good, it's not broken, it's still doing what it's supposed to. We're going to go ahead and ensure that we can still move it from side to side, up, down, the whole nine yards. It's still got those clicks, so it's still good. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at our buffer spring. We're going to look at our buffer spring to ensure that there's no cracks, there's no breaks. Sometimes you'll see some of that CLP that gets left in there, which it looks like it's a shiny spot, but it's not really. But you just still want to take a nice close look at it. You're going to want to make sure that it's not hyperextended or hypercompressed. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the retaining pin now for our trigger assembly. We want to ensure that these two grooves right here are still there and still noticeable and that they're not easily uh, able for that, that spring to be able to be pushed over. Okay, we want to make sure it's still doing its job. For these three parts, again, common uh, cracks, breaks, or bends. You want to look to make sure that the springs aren't broken, that there's no cracks, our buffer's still doing its job. You're going to look at the buffer itself. You're going to ensure that the buffer itself still has a little bit of grease on it, which is good. That's what you want. There's not any really concave spots to it. It's not, uh, it's not breaking. You're going to look at the cap. The big thing with the cap is you want to ensure that it's got the, the threads on the cap are not cross-threaded, that there's no damage to it, because if this, is, if this gets damaged, uh, then that's going to cause a lot of room for your spring to be pushed back out. But again, that little, se that's little safety clip right here is supposed to do the job of keeping it uh, perfectly well and protected, so you have to make sure that this is still tight and still good. Uh, spring's not cracked, broken, or bent. Our disassembly button there's really nothing wrong with it. A lot of times what happens with these is right here where the pin goes in, th that's where you'll find your cracks. You want to make sure that those cracks are not there, okay? which these, this one's not. Go ahead and replace that pin. And now that you've done the inspection process for all the parts, now you're going to look at the receiver. You're going to go ahead and look at the receiver to ensure that nothing is broken on it. There's no uh, obvious wear and tear. I'm going to look down my magazine tube, ensure that it's pretty good. I'm going to look at the threads up top on the magazine itself, on the magazine tube itself. Once again, make sure it's not cross-threaded. I'm going to look at my buffer. I'm going to make sure that my buffer is still doing its job, that there's no common sp uh, spots that I can see that's rubbing on each other, which if parts rub on each other, you'll generally see shiny spots, which that's what you don't really want to see. But this looks good. This looks decent. Now that we've done the inspection portion of this, we can move on to reassembling the receiver assembly. All right, the very first thing that I start off with is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install my Picatinny rail. The reason for this is I can go ahead once this is installed and I can flip it over and this can act as a base that will hold my receiver steady. So I'm going to go ahead and put in all my washers. Remember, they're con concave, so you want that cave side to be facing up. You want that groove to be with the groove of the rails. I'll go ahead and put in my screws. Remember righty tighty, lefty loosey. Now I'm putting on the ones on the end first because that's going to line up the rest of the holes with the screw. I'm put just putting them in hand tight for right now because you still want to be able to move that rail system to line up. Okay, up next I'm going to go ahead and install my rear sight. It's going to sit just like so. I'll place it on, flip the whole receiver over. I'm going to go ahead and put in my screws. Now for these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-seat those washers with the proper side up before I put them in because I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start lining everything up. And sometimes you're going to have to line it up and kind of Finagle with it until it works. I'm only putting them on just enough so that I can put the rear screw on. You should make that a good habit. Which there goes my rear one and my front one.
My rear sight's now on. And now it can hold itself up and support itself. Up next, we're going to go ahead and reinstall the buffer. So we're going to put the buffer in, just like so. The way the buffer sits in and compiles with the spring, the spring will sit outside the buffer like so, which means that we've got to put this in so that this long strip, uh, long strip is facing to the rear. Now I'll go ahead and put in the spring. Notice how the spring is all the way down, but it's still halfway out. So you're going to have to compress it. Once you get it down to a certain length, I take the cap and I start feeding it all the way on. Once it's on, I'll go ahead and I'll spin it. That's why it's a trick. You've got to make sure that it's properly threaded first. Now that we've done that, I can go ahead and keep doing my what I was doing before. I can tighten it up. What also helps is you can put your thumb over and you can just spin it. Now you're not going to want this to go all the way down, but you, you are going to want it to go down below the threads just enough because now that it's about one to two threads down, you can put in the, lock wa uh, the locking washer. You're going to need to grab your retaining ring pliers. Kind of angle it a little bit. Preset it. And it's in. Now that it's in, we can now focus on putting back together uh, our disassembly button. So our disassembly button is going to sit just like this on the inside. Now, you, the key for this is maintaining that spring tension. You're going to want to compress it because now we have to put the pin back in. So I'm going to feed the pin a little bit first. Line up the hole. Compress the whole thing. It went in, but I'm still kind of keeping a hold of it. We want to push it down just a little bit more. Because now you have solid tension on that uh, bolt release button. The very last step for the receiver, we're going to go ahead and put in uh, our trigger assembly retaining pin. The first step we're going to put in is this little spring right here. Compress it and kind of push it all the way down. And now you're going to want to go ahead and put that retaining ring right up here and pre-feed everything. Because now we can go ahead and we can kind of push it in. You can use a punch if you need to, but try to make that little buffer as flat as you can. Because now you get to put in this washer. And it'll lock right in place. And with that, our receiver assembly is completely put back together. Up next, we have disassembly of the trigger assembly. 
Now the very first step is you're going to want to remove this C-clamp right here. And that C-clamp will come off. And that is what's holding this bushing in place. So the very, the very next step that we're going to do is you're going to place your weapon on fire. Use your thumb and push down on that hammer and pull the trigger. You're going to ease that hammer forward to take a lot of the spring tension off of it. Up next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove our breech bolt latch uh, pin and spring. You're just going to pull back and let it come out. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and ease tension off that hammer spring and hammer spring cap. We're going to go ahead and remove the bushing. This bushing is what's holding on our shell ramp, as well as our hammer, our shell release lever, and our hammer spring and hammer spring cap. Now, on our shell ramp, we have our breech bolt latch and our breech bolt latch pin. It is a headed pin that's only held in by its own weight. That's the size of it. It is very small. Up next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove the trigger uh, itself with the trigger, sp uh, trigger spring. There are there are two punch, uh, two pins, two trigger pins right here, a front and a rear. This rear one's going to be a little bit more harder to take out, but its only purpose is to hold in the trigger. This front one is what allows the trigger to, priv to pivot. So we're going to go ahead, grab a punch, and we're going to punch out the first one, no problem. And you'll be, you'll be able to take out your trigger plus trigger spring. Up next, you're going to want to grab your bench block, as well as your brass hammer. Because this rear one is a little bit finicky, you're not going to be able to just push it out. Now our front and rear trigger pins are exactly the same. Both ends, the same NSN, same everything. They're exactly the same, so they can be interchangeable. Before we, rem uh, before we take apart the trigger, we're going to go ahead and take out the safety. Now our safety is held in place by this, um, this roll pin right here. There is a spring that sits underneath here along with a detent that allows that safety to move the way it moves. So what you're going to do is you're going to push out that, um, that pin. When you're gonna, when before you remove your punch, put your thumb over that small hole on the top and remove your punch because that spring's under tension. You're going to drop out your safety detent and our safety detent spring. And our ambidextrous safety will come right out. That's everything off of the assembly. Now we can move on to the trigger. Our trigger has our trigger spring, our sear, our sear pin, and a sear spring right in here. It's also got a disconnector plunger disconnector plunger spring and a disconnector pin that holds it all together. So you're going to take a punch, push out on that pin. That's our disconnector pin. It's very small as well, so don't lose it. Once you remove the punch, your disconnector will come right out. Same with the plunger and the spring. And that's our trigger. This is complete disassembly of the trigger assembly. Now we can move on to inspecting the, uh, the parts themselves. Now, just like with any other spring, you're going to want to make sure that there's no hyper compression or hy uh, hyper extension, okay, that there's no cracks or breaks. You're going to want to ensure that there's no cracks, bends, breaks, or burrs on really any of these parts. The biggest problem with our shell ramp is that sometimes that they get they get little cracks right here on the bottoms, which a lot which makes them essentially snap in half, as well as right here where the breech bolt latch sits. Uh, I'm looking at my trigger. I'm ensuring that these small parts right here where the trigger is, as well as where the hammer grabs, is not overly rounded. This part's a little bit hard to see. Right here is where the hammer actually grabs onto the trigger. 
You want to look at that as well as this little notch where the disconnector sits right here. That notch is where it sits. So the hammer will come back and it'll latch on just like that. So you want to make sure that it's not rounded. At the same time, I'm also grabbing my hammer. I'm making sure that it's not rounded on, the, on these edges as well. I will forewarn you that if this, if this disconnector is rounded and it stops working, you will essentially turn the shotgun into a fully automatic shotgun. And we don't want that. Up next, I'm looking at my shell release lever, making sure the same things, no cracks, bends, bur burrs, or breaks. Stuff to look at, and one of the bigger things on this is the safety spring. So this is my safety spring. A lot of times, because the way we have to install it, uh, you have to push in on the spring, push down on the spring, and push a, uh, another pin on top of it like that. These end coils will get broken, or they'll get deformed. So what you want to look at is see how there's some kind of deformation in this one. That's what you really want to look at, and you, you should probably look at getting this replaced. All right, now that inspection's done, we can go ahead and focus on reassembly. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install my safety. So the safety spring goes, sits inside the, this plunger just like so. We can install our safety on either side. We drop in the plunger from the top, and this is where I was talking about you have to be careful. Because what we're going to do is we're going to grab our punch. We have to compress this spring while at the same time pushing in on this roll pin. So I'll pre-feed it, and I'll push that spring down so that that roll pin goes on top of it, line up the hole on the other side, and our safety's back in. And this is how you test it. You should have that nice, crisp action. Once that's done, we can go ahead and start focusing on our trigger and installing the disconnector and all the parts associated. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put your disconnector spring on the disconnector plunger, place it in this recess right here, so it'll look like this. Now you're going to grab your disconnector, you're going to grab your disconnector, and you'll set it in place just like so. You're going to have to hold it in place, and grab your disconnector pin, and place it in from the side. It's going to take some finagling until, so you can line up the holes. Once you line up the holes, the trigger assembly will be right in place, and we can go ahead and preset our trigger spring in this recess in the back. The trigger will look exactly like this. Once the trigger's done, we can go ahead and start setting up our rear trigger pin, because the rear trigger pin will sit in the trigger right in this recess in the back. So we're going to put that in so we can hold it in place. Give it a nice little tap with your brass hammer, and now you can preset it. And that's how we want it. Your second trigger pin will go through about halfway, just enough to hold the trigger in place. If you push it in too far, it's okay. Just push it back out. Because now we got to go ahead and grab our shell release lever spring. It's going to sit in just like this, but in this little groove that's right, right, right behind it. So you're going to push it down, and what helps me is I gra I'll grab a punch and I'll go through from the other side and push it down, and then force the trigger pin in from the other side. That way, it's already pre-set up. Think of this as uh, an easier version of the M9 sear pin. Up next, we're going to go ahead and pre-set up our shell ramp. Okay, so we're going to grab our breech bolt latch. The recessed side is going to go on the inside of the shell ramp on this outer hole right here. I'm going to grab my breech bolt latch pin and I'm going to place it in just like so, so that the headed side is up and it'll fit just like that perfectly. If you put it in from the outside, you are not going to be able to install this properly. So from here, we can kind of start putting everything kind of back together. It's all going to have to go on kind of at the same time, so you're going to have to bear with it. The shell ramp has to go in at a 90 degree angle, just like this, and rock it back. If you try to go head on, it's not going to work. You have to put it in at a 90 degree angle, then rock it back. Once you've got that, you can grab your hammer spring, throw that in there, hammer spring cap, 
Grab your shell release lever. It's gonna, you're going to weave it through this spot above the red dot on the shell release lever spring. Shift this up. This little arm that's on the top of the shell release lever, you do not want to put on top of that hammer spring cap. It does not go there. I'm going to go ahead and preset my hammer. Grab my bushing, and from the right-hand side, I'm going to put my bushing through and just kind of work it until it goes through and is fed through everything else. Once it's been fed through, I grab my bar and my spring, pull back, and it's going to sit in that little recess in that uh, breech bolt latch. I'm going to kind of push this through a little bit more. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my hammer and I'm going to cock it. And I'm going to put it on safe. This way it's all held together. You're ensuring everything's nice and tight. The very last step, I'm going to go ahead and install this clip. Once that clip's installed, you have completely reassembled your trigger assembly. The very last thing we're going to talk about is called the functions check. Now when you do the functions check, it's to ensure that this weapon was put together uh, properly, that everything is working, it's fully functioning, and we're going to give it a shot. So the very first thing that you're going to want to do is ensure that your weapon's on safe, which mine is on safe right now. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to rack the bolt to the rear, ensure that there's nice smooth uh, flow of the bolt going back and forth, it's not binding or anything like that. Next, I'm going to go ahead and press the shell release lever and the bolt release button to press and that they click and that they actually have nice crisp action. One disengages the other. That's the way it's supposed to be. Now, with that shell release lever engaged, I'm going to go ahead, rack it to the rear. The bolt should lock to the rear. I'm going to press the bolt release button, sending the bolt forward. Now, I can go ahead and put my weapon on fire. I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger rack the bolt to the rear, it's going to lock to the rear. From here I'm going to press, while I'm still holding the trigger to the rear, 